Baran Zimi is a postdoc researcher at the University of Pisa. She holds a PhD degree from the Amir Kabir University of Technology, Tehran, Iran. Since 2015, she has worked as a visiting and postdoc researcher at the University of Pisa and Federal University of Sergibi in Brazil and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, USA. Her research interests include fabrication and characterization of micro nanofibers with dry wet spinning and electrospinning methods and nanoparticles via electrospray method for biomedical application. So I leave the floor to you for your presentation concerning the deposition of chitin nanofibers of different uh, substrates by electrospray technique. So you can start. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, today uh, I am going to talk about um, electrospray technique, especially electrospraying of chitin nanofibril on uh, different substrate. As you know, we have a different method for surface modification like uh, and gamma irradiations or deep coating or uh, surface graft polymerization, but uh, we have some uh, limitation in these techniques, for example, poor control of adhesion and composition, and also long reaction times uh, are some uh, limitations of these techniques. Uh, electrospray is uh, a new technique that uh, we can, uh, that uh, received a lot of attention um, for surface modification of different substrates, including film, uh, electrospan fiber, uh, different like scaffold, uh, etc. And the principle of, uh, since the principle of electrospray is, um, the basic principle is uh, more or less like electrospinning, I'm going to briefly explain uh, what we, uh, have in electrospinning system. As you know, um, electrospinning happens when um, electric field applied to the polymer solution or polymer melt, and uh, when the electric field overcomes the surface tension of polymer solution on the tip of the needle, it forms, as you can see in the video, a tail of coin, and then a very fine jet. Uh, and um, during the distance between the collector and the tip of the needle, uh, solvents evaporate and we are able to uh, collect uh, fibers in nanoscale size. And in this uh, technique, there are some uh, like uh, parameters, uh, especially solution parameters that uh, have a very significant effect on the final uh, properties uh, like viscosity, the conductivity, or um, the type of solvents, and also electro, uh, the parameter of electrospinning, like uh, the, uh, um, the amount of voltage, uh, the uh, distance between the collector and the tip of the needle, and also ambient uh, parameters like humidity and temperature has very important um, effect on electrospan fiber. But uh, in electrospray, uh, we have the same principle, but uh, uh, in, uh, when the jet forms, uh, the, ch uh, the charged liquid jets at some points will break up into the droplets, and uh, by solvent evaporation, this uh, droplet shrinks, and we have uh, a lot of charge on this uh, shrink droplets, and it uh, makes droplets to be more smaller. Uh, they break up to the smaller one, and at the end, we will have uh, some particles in the range of uh, nano. Uh, and you may ask how we can produce uh, particles instead of uh, fibers by this technology. Uh, as um, the most important parameters uh, to reach the particle instead of fiber is uh, like um, polymer um, solution viscosity. Actually for each uh, like um, combination, a specific combination of polymer and solvent, we have a like critical overlap concentration in which we are able to produce particles uh, instead of uh, fibers, and if we go higher, we would reach to the fiber. Um, we can say that a polymer solution um, for uh, electrospray uh, process should be sufficiently dilute so that a low enough viscosity allows the solution 
to uh, like break up into the droplets and at the same time should not to be, uh, be too viscous to produce the fiber. And uh, one advantage is that with this technology we are able to have fibers and particles at the same time. So we can have different layer of fibers and particles if even using different polymer solution. In this case we can have uh, at the same time the, we can produce the substrate and at the same time we can have some surface modification of the substrate. Uh, so it was the reason that in uh, Kukunko project we decided to investigate the uh, possible application of electrospray uh, for a surface modification of cellulose tissue that you know more or less uh, what we have done in uh, a Kukunko project. Uh, we selected chitin, oh, we selected chitin and nanofibril since uh, chitin and that is a byproduct of uh, fishery and plant um, biomass in a nanoscale has some antibacterial and anti-inflammatory activity. Uh, so um, it was the reason that uh, we wanted to see if we can have um, like such properties on the surface of cellulose tissue. And uh, we used uh, chitin from different sources as you can see here in, the, in this uh, slide. So at first, since the uh, type of solvents is very important and have very important effect on the final properties of the uh, electrospray uh, particles, we investigate the effect of a uh, different type of solvents like distilled water, the combination of distilled water and acetic acid, and also distilled water and hexafluoroisopropanol. And as you can see, by using just distilled water, uh, we have some uh, like aggregated uh, nano uh, nanoparticles and it was like a drop of um, aggregated nanochitin. But uh, using different uh, solvents like uh, adding some acetic acid or hexafluoroisopropanol lets to have a very well distribution of chitin nanofibers on the surface of the aluminum foil and after we reach to the optimum uh, electrospray condition, we try to use the same condition uh, on the surface of cellulosic tissue and we got uh, the same results. As you can see, using just distilled water, we had like a droplets of aggregated chitin nanofibril, while by using uh, different solvents, um, we could uh, like successfully uh, have a surface modification of cellulose tissue in a uniform way. And here uh, we got the same results from the chitin uh, from mushroom source. And uh, again, we obtained better results using the combination of uh, distilled water and acetic acid as a solvent. So then we investigated uh, like uh, some um, biological properties of the cellulose tissue. And as you can see, uh, we obtain a good results because um, human uh, dermal keratin oxide cells successfully could adhere to the surface of the scaffold uh, and also we did a direct and indirect cytotoxicity test and as you can see the cells um, were almost alive and it shows that uh, this type of surface modification is safe and uh, the applied solvents and uh, electrospray technique did not change the like chitin properties. Uh, in another project, PolyBioSkin, that uh, aims to reach to three uh, different products, uh, almost fully bio-based, uh, we also for two products, um, Beauty Mask and Wound Resting, used uh, the electrospinning technology to produce some fibers and at the same time some surface modification using electrospray. Actually, uh, PolyBioSkin for wound resting applications aimed uh, to develop a biodegradable and at least 90% bio-based uh, nanostructured biocompatible non-woven tissue for use in wound resting. Uh, so we received some PHAs from University of Sheffield, thanks to Ipshita that is here today. And uh, we use electrospinning to produce this uh, type of electrospun fibers. And uh, we try to use impregnations process and at the same time in lab scale electrospray uh, to have some surface modification on this uh, like wound resting. Here you can see the PHA fibers uh, that we produce with uh, electrospinning system and 
uh, we try to uh, have some uh, like chitin nanofibril and also since uh, chitin and due to their, uh, the uh, polarity of chitin and lignin, uh, it's possible to have the complex of chitin and lignin and at the same time we can have some additive in this such complex. So we also uh, try to electrospray such complexes uh, to uh, compare the results and as you can see, uh, uh, with uh, chitin, pure chitin nanofibrils, we had a smaller size and maybe better distribution, uh, while by using these complexes, uh, in some points we have some aggregation and we have two different populations uh, of uh, particles, bigger one and uh, smaller one. And uh, again, we try to use the same electrospray parameters uh, to surface modify the PHA fibers. And you can see in both cases, uh, using chitin and uh, CLA, we could successfully uh, like decorate the surface of PHA in order to improve the uh, antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. And we could detect the using the infrared spectroscopy, we could detect the, uh, like the main um, cast characteristic bands of uh, CLA and uh, CN on the surface of the um, PHA electrospun fibers, which shows that um, our method was uh, safe and didn't change the chemical structure of the particle. And here you can see some uh, biological results, uh, cell uh, metabolic activity that uh, more or less was the same with the pure one, and also uh, we reached to the some uh, indirect antibacterial activity using uh, chitin and CLA um, in our uh, product, in our uh, substrate. Uh, another project that we tried to use electrospray technique uh, for surface modification was electro, uh, for nano ear drum. Uh, in which we aim to produce some scaffold for uh, tympanic membrane regeneration. And uh, in this project, we use P, in here you can see the overview of the project. And we again uh, try to use chitin from different source. And to have more effects of chitin, uh, at first we try to mix the, P, the polymer, uh, POTPBT, uh, with chitin, dried chitin, in, uh, like using a mini lab extruder. And uh, we had uh, like very uniform uh, distribution of chitin in the like this multi the filaments we obtained from the extruder, and then uh, we used this like material uh, as a feed of electro spinning. And after we produce some fibers, then we use electrospray technique to have again uh, chitin nanofibril uh, on the surface of the uh, this kind of a scaffold. Uh, so we designed, uh, with the help of uh, one student, Lorenzo, that is here also, we designed some specific collector to have radial and circular uh, form of fibers to, as much as possible, mimic the structure of the tympanic membrane. And uh, we use, uh, as you can see, different type of uh, chitin. And uh, in all cases, um, from shrimp and from mushroom, uh, they uh, are like they were, uh, they had a good uh, morphological properties and. Uh, uniform size. Then we try to electrospire chitin on the surface of this uh, POTPBT, and you can see uh, that uh, in both cases we had a uh, like good uh, distribution of uh, chitin nanofibril on the surface of the fiber. Uh, and again, uh, for this uh, project, we also try to produce PLJ, PLGA nanoparticles. Um, as a carrier of some specific uh, mod drug model, uh, rhodamine and also uh, ciprofloxacin. Uh, and you can see how uh, beautiful uh, are the morphology of PLJ particles that we produce with electrospray technique. And here you can see the surface modification of the same polymer with such um, like PLJ particles, how beautiful they uh, located on the surface of different uh, like um, electrospun fiber. And here we also did uh, like uh, plasma treatment in order to have as much as possible uh, particles even in the, not just um, uh, top layer, but also in the um, other layer of the electrospun fiber. And you can see the effect of this plasma treatment that could help us to have particles even in the, even in the, sorry, um, 
other layers. And at the end, uh, in NanoCell project, that is very, it was a small project that um, Iranian Nanotechnology Institute um, like uh, support me to do these activities. Uh, the aim was to produce uh, cellulose nanofiber by electro spinning um, to have a long um, continuous fibers in the nanoscale size and uh, at the same time to have some alignment in order for some uh, applications, including biomedical applications for tympanic membrane and wound resting, and also for uh, food applications since bacterial cellulose is very pure and we can use even for biomedical and other uh, application. Uh, what I have done, uh, I use again electrospinning uh, systems to produce fiber. Uh, since uh, in the other methods like chemical treatment or mechanical treatment, we can obtain to the nano size, but with very short lengths, and this is one of the limitation of the other methods. While by electrospinning and such um, like a collector system, we could um, uh, able to produce continuous uh, nano size cellulose fiber uh, with such alignment. And since uh, the dissolution of cellulose is very hard, uh, I use uh, ionic liquid as solvent that is a very good solvent for the cellulose, bacterial cellulose, uh, since it has very like a lot of uh, hydrogen band between the polymer chain. And uh, um, using ionic liquid, uh, we could successfully dis uh, distort cellulose, but the point is that uh, since it's not volatile, uh, we have to find a way to remove the ionic liquid from the fiber. And by designing such systems, we try to put collector systems in coagulation bus in order to remove uh, the ionic liquid. This is the, the systems that I use uh, to produce uh, like PC fiber that uh, again, we received the source of bacterial cellulose from University of Sheffield. And uh, yeah, here you can see the results that uh, just uh, by using only 50 RPM of collector speed, uh, we almost have some alignment. That this is the point, because uh, with bacterial cellulose, we have the nano size, but we don't have control in alignment. If we can uh, do this with electro spinning, with uh, the rotating collector, we would able to produce fibers uh, with alignment, and we can improve different properties, like mechanical properties or uh, et cetera. And again, I use to improve the antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties of cellulose, since it doesn't have very high antibacterial properties. Uh, we decided to use, again, chitin nanofibril, and uh, we did electrospray on the surface of cellulose nanofibers, and we did some uh, biological tests. As you can see, we received good, uh, like, um, biological tests since uh, in the live and dead uh, cell uh, test, uh, we had uh, almost li live cells in a green, as you can see, uh, with and without using chitin nanofibril, and also we obtained some uh, indirect antibacterial properties uh, from this type of uh, like product that we reach. So as conclusion, uh, I can say that we can consider electrospray as a like, um, interesting technology for surface modification. Uh, for sure, maybe for a scale up, we have some limitations uh, that we can maybe uh, find a solution for this. But, uh, and also um, we can use chitin nanofibril as a good substrate for improved uh, some specific properties, especially antimicrobial and also anti-inflammatory. And uh, thanks to this uh, technology, we uh, could successfully distribute uh, cellulose, uh, chitin nanofibril on different surfaces like cellulose tissue, uh, different type of uh, electrospan mesh, PHA, and BC and POT PBT. So at the end, I have to thanks uh, to all of uh, my groups uh, who uh, supported me to reach to these results. And, also, thank you for your attention, and I am here for any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation, Bahari. Any questions? Okay, I have just one question. 
So, do you think that the high viscosity of the ionic liquids uh, to solubilize the cellulose could be um, a problem mm, to, for the removal for the removal of the ionic liquids uh, during the phase of the removal yeah, of exactly. the ionic liquids? Uh, I forgot to mention, actually, is a good question, because uh, with the ionic liquid, I could dissolve cellulose, even, uh, even with very low concentration, I had high viscosity due to the, this uh, specific properties of ionic liquid. And at the end, I have to use co-solvents, um, uh, some ratio, uh, to improve the spinability of the um, polymer solution and also uh, to, ha to remove some parts of the solvents during the electrospinning. And uh, the remaining ionic liquid, uh, I just use the uh, bath containing water in order to, to remove. This is the point of like uh, bacterial cellulose uh, solution for electrospinning that the viscosity is very challenging. You should reach to the right viscosity to, to, have, to be able to spin cellulose. And it was very challenging to reach to the optimum condition to be able to have these fibers with electrospinning. Sorry, can you please explain better the, the benefits you have in using a line and nanofibers respect to the, let's say, random uh, structure? Thank you. Yeah, for some applications, some specific application, you need the alignment. And also for improving the mechanical properties, if you have aligned fibers, you, um, for sure you have higher mechanical properties. Uh, that with uh, like um, production of bacterial cellulose with, uh, from the um, like bacteria directly, you don't have this control for the alignment. But if you can produce by electrospinning with uh, different uh, collector speed, you can have different alignments uh, just adjusting the speed of the collector. Thank you, Barry, for that lovely talk. I know how difficult it is to do this, so uh, congratulations. Um, have we, uh, or could it be, uh, could we look at exactly from the same question that the, uh, you know, the material itself is nanofibrillated? So when you're dissolving it in the ionic solvent, are we losing that structure completely? Or do we have some microstructure left and then you are on top of that making these aligned fibers? Could we look at perhaps the lower level of microstructure um, at a higher resolution to see whether we still retain some of that nanofibrillated nature of bacterial cellulose. Um, I didn't understand well your so, question. So when you look at, say, your fibers that you get after your electrospinning, yeah. overall we know it's got this diameter and this is what it looks like. But perhaps we could look at cross-sections and see do we still have some of the nanofibrillated structure within that main microstructure, some nanostructure within it, um, no. my guess would be it would still retain some. I don't know what the ionic solvents do to the microstructure, but that might be something to perhaps look at. Yeah, yeah, would be, it's a good suggestion. Like a cross that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Great. didn't do this, but I think it's would a be. good suggestion and we can do simply sure. To, to be sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much again, Baron. Uh,